Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be going through some of my must have GNOME extensions. So let's get started. So if you guys haven't noticed by now, I actually use a lot of Ubuntu and GNOME Shell. And that wasn't always the case. I used to switch between the operating systems with Arch or Debian or Elementary OS or even Pop OS. But since 20.04, I basically switched over to GNOME and Ubuntu. I've and I've been liking it ever since. So today I'm gonna to be showing you a bunch of extensions that I've been using to make my GNOME shell more at home or work with my workflow. So let's jump into it. This is my work laptop that I'm gonna be showing you, which is a Lenovo IdeaPad 530S with an i7 core eighth generation 8550U, 16 gigs of RAM and 256 NVMe. And I am using 20.10 on this uh, particular Linux operating system or Ubuntu 2010. Now. I'm gonna pop over into my extensions and show you what I got going on over here, okay? And I'm just basically gonna go down the list. And if you guys have any extensions that you guys use that I did not mention, please list them in the comments down below because I would love to check out new extensions that I would like to use. Now, to start off, we have Blur My Shell. So I just turned it off and when I go into my show applications, you can see the picture in the background is not blurred. You could actually see it pretty clearly. And depending on the wallpaper you're using, it actually gets a little bit distracting compared to what you have laid out on your icons. So when you do use Blur My Shell, the background becomes blur. It, it just makes it easier for me to look at my icons. Another thing is I used to use Arch menu a lot and a lot of other menus like similar to what you would get with Windows 10, but I decided to stick with the GNOME shell right now because if you have a laptop that has two graphic cards, you could choose between that just by right clicking and launching with your discrete graphic card. That's one of the things why I kept it in this menu. Now, moving down, we have Caffeine. Caffeine is by far the, own, the first extension I almost always install which is this little coffee cup down here. This allows you to keep your screen running so it doesn't fall asleep, especially when I'm filming videos like this. I tend to keep it on and it doesn't suspend my screen so I don't lose, the screen doesn't go to sleep, I don't have to type in password as I'm chatting with you guys or anything. So yeah, caffeine definitely works for presentations and stuff like this. So moving down, the clipboard indicator is as it seems. It basically gives you a little thing about your clipboard. So if you have like 20 items listed in here, right now I only have one because I cleared the history, uh, you could see and grab the previous things that you copied and paste, especially if you got URLs and stuff like that that you constantly copy and then you copied over it. And then you, it's basically a really good clipboard management tool to have on your GNOME shell. Now, this is by far my favorite, which is Compass Alike Windows Effect, which gives me this little blurry, shaky movement you see. A lot of times when I uh, just load up my desktop, it looks like a Windows just in general without having to really look into it. But as soon as I move a window, it just appears that it's very smooth and a lot of people look at it like, okay, what is that? How come it could do that? And I just like to keep it on my uh, Linux installation. You could actually play around with it depending on how you want to change the effects and stuff like that. And it's just a really cool effect to have. It's not a needed thing, but it's one of my favorites. All right, next we have uh, CPU Power Governor. Don't worry about that. That is actually not supposed to be used. I just left it in here, but I could actually go here and remove it, but I just left it as is. But what we are really looking for are these two things, CPU Power Management or CPU Frequency. Now, this one, the CPU Power Management, is the one I would usually use for Intel CPUs. So you could see a little menu here. You could change the minimum frequency, the maximum frequency, turbo boost, and all this other stuff, and also the governors itself. And this other one is the CPU frequency you've probably seen on my channel before, where this one will actually give you a full menu where you could do the same thing as that other one. This does take a little bit more memory to run, I realize, but it doesn't work on Intel as well as this little guy does. This works very well on Ryzen or any other CPUs. It does work on Intel as well, but I find this little one, uh, the CPU power manager to work better than the CPU frequency. So I tend to have that, well, I have it shut off, but I did install it just to show you guys. To start off, this whole thing that you see being my taskbar is on the bottom, my menu is on the bottom left, the clock is on the bottom right, all this other stuff that looks very similar to like a Windows 10 style, which is something I'm very comfortable with. It's because I train my eyes or my muscle memory to always look down when I'm looking at the task, and I'm not about to like retrain everything just because GNOME decided to put everything on the left side and above, you know what I mean? So I decided to use this plugin called Dash to Panel, which gives you the ability to move the panel back down to the bottom and gives you like more of a Windows 10 setting where you have the 
favorite launcher, your application menu, your clock on the right. So it's not anything that you guys particularly have to use. It's just something I've trained for because I switch between Linux and Windows all the time. So this does help my workflow a lot. And I did change a lot of the settings, uh, turn this favorite bar into a launch bar. Uh, I am able to actually see my little task menu over here, like what's going on with the icons. And I moved everything smaller, you know, it's just a little customization that I did to this. So dash to panel is what you're looking for if you're trying to get to a similar look. All right, next up we have removable drive media or removable drive menu, which is this guy over here. I use this a lot as well because it's on my laptops. So I always plug in USBs or plug in SD cards, stuff like that. And you never want to just pull out your USB or whatever. You want to eject it before you do that. This way you make sure you don't have any data corruption. So this little menu itself helps a lot if I want to eject something or plug something in and just look at it. So I tend to keep that around. Now, moving down, we have removable drop arrows. Okay, here's the thing. If I keep this off, you see how every single thing that I downloaded or extension has this little down arrow and just takes up wasteless like space that you don't really need to take up. So I installed this little thing called removable drop arrows. This way it just makes everything clean again. So that's another little thing that I added. All right, moving on Snap Manager. Snap Manager is a little plugin over here that allows you to list all your snaps, uh, refresh it if you need to, or reinstall or remove snaps, stuff like that. Um, Snap is a thing that I don't tend to check my store a lot, like my normal Ubuntu store, just to see if there's any updates on. So. Basically, if there's an update for your snap, there will be a pop-up notification saying like, hey, look, something needs to be refreshed. You could just hit it and it'll update your snaps. That's why I keep that around because I don't tend to check my store and check on each individual snap to update it as much as I should. Now, next up, biggest thing, sound and input and output device chooser. This actually gives you this little menu over here where you can now choose between your audio devices. So you have headphones plugged in, HDMI, built-in speaker, whatever it is, you could choose between which one you want, as well as the audio input. So if you got a built-in mic on your laptop, or if you're stuck in one of those uh, three and a half inch mics that you plug into the side, you could choose between which device you want to use without having to go into settings or looking for sounds. And then in here, you will pop, you know, turn this on or off, stuff like that. You could just easily switch between that through here. I did install this little plugin called System Action Hibernate. And if you go down to the bottom right menu, if you go over to Power Off, it should have a new menu that says Hibernate. That's if your system is set up for it. Right now, my system is not, but it will be soon. So you should see that new menu come up. Next up, User Themes. Uh, that allows you to basically theme what you're looking at right now, the different icons, title bars, and stuff like that, uh, especially the uh, bottom panel. That's all part of user themes. That's one of the first things you would install so you could change the configurations of your theming. Now, last but not least, I have Win Tile, Windows 10 tiling. I gotta be honest, Windows 10 has a way of tiling windows, especially if you go like this. Say I have it turned off. Normally, if I hit Windows key left or up, it'll full screen, go to the right, back down to the normal size or minimize. It doesn't even minimize, I thought it did. So one of the things I do like on Windows 10 tiling manager is Windows key left, I could pop it over to the left, pop it this way, pop it on the bottom, you see that? Go to the right, and I could just adjust to how I want to, especially if you're having something like a terminal and you're looking at um, something else, you could just basically do what you want to here and you know adjust how you want it. Like this is, I don't know, it's something that I love using on the Windows 10 and to bring it into um, Ubuntu like this, I, I enjoy it as well. So that's another thing you could play around with. You could also change the settings if you need to, but mostly this is, I just leave it as default and let that run. Anyway, uh, that is about it on all the extensions that I mainly use. If you see an extra couple of icons down here, that's because they're applications. So I have uh, Flameshot, which allows me to take my screenshots and obviously Discord. So those are not GNOME extensions that you would normally see. Anyway, if you guys, enjoyed this video or have any extensions to share, please comment down in the description below. If you have any questions about this, also hit it down in the comments down below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing, also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say my Nerd Cave, heck till it hurts.